Hello guys. On this video, I'll be showing you how to create a web API, a simple web API, and add authentication to it. So let's get started. So first of all, the first thing I just kind of want to go over what we're going to be needing. So we're, we, on this video, we're going to be using Visual Studio 2019. You could pretty, pretty much use any Visual Studio. Plus, we're going to use this uh, free uh, API tester, we can call it which is called Talent API Tester. I'll drop the link below. This is actually a Chrome extension. All right, so let's get started. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio. We're going to, in order to, to create our API, we're gonna create our, we're gonna select ASP.NET Web Application with .NET Framework. All right, let's go ahead and click Next and we can call it whatever we want. Uh, let's call Test a API Auth authentication and click OK and click create. So what we want here, we want to create a web API. Go ahead and create. Just give it a second. So what this is going to do, it's going to create uh, our web API, a basic web API with a few controllers and functions, right? Give it a second. It's opening it. There you go. So. These are the controllers on the web API that got created. So let's go ahead and run it just to test and make sure it works. We can put it, uh, all right, let's go to values here, right? We can put a drop, we can put a, a breakpoint here. Let's go ahead and run it. I just kind of want to go through the process here, right? Just to make sure that this is working, right? So this is the URL. This is the URL for the API. Let's grab that and test it on our tester on our AP, on a talent API you just paste it here localhost HTTP, HTTP localhost and you can put values that's the name of the controllers and hit and you hit send oops all right is it value or values it's oh yeah it's values oh so it is values but I forgot something really important when using this, you gotta make sure when passing an API, you gotta make sure on URL you type API values. And you hit send, you see how I go directly into the get function. And I hit okay, I hit F, I hit continue here. Yes, I get the value one and value two, just like it's uh just like here. Okay. All right. Step number two here. So we tested that the values uh, controller works. Step number two, we want to add some sort of uh, permissioning authorization so other so not everybody has access to this API, right? So let's go ahead and stop our um, our project. You can do on the models, you can do whatever you want. So just right click on the models or whatever, and then create a new class. Let's call this class um, auth attribute. So it's going to be an authorization attribute. Right, so you go ahead and click oh, click add. So this is the attribute class. This is where all the authorization, uh, the authorization is going to happen. Now, in order to in order to make this happen, we gotta use authorization filter. Filter attribute. So this is this will come with Visual Studio. So if you hover. You see how you see it? You see the red squiggly line? You hover it. Uh, where is it? And then you click the light bulb. Come on. And you you, you select using system.web.http.filters. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function that is going to overwrite the on authorization. Overwrite. Void on, yeah, there you go, on, on authorization filter. There you go. That's what we're going to need right now. So this is this is going to override our authorization filter. Right? So what this, what this does is every time, so what this does, kind of overview here real quick. All right, let's kind of an overview here real quick. Every time somebody calls, for this is just an example, the value API controller, before it hits the controller, it's going to hit this authorization attribute, this function, this on authorization function here. All right, so let's go ahead and keep running, right? Keep, uh, let's keep 
testing. Keep writing. So if so, this is a basic authorization filter. All right, so I, actually, before that, let's create a a key, right? Uh, a private string key, a key, a private key that only the user with permissions or the people with permissions are gonna have access to. And you give them this key, and they're gonna have be able to access this. Um, this API call. So this is a private key. You can name it whatever. You can do a random key. You can do a GUI, not a GUI, a GUID. You can do all kinds of, uh, you know, whatever you want here for this key, right? All right. So this is a private key. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is on the, from the web, from the action context here, we gotta make sure that the action context headers has the authorization, right? So if it's equal to no, if you don't, if there's no authorization, nothing is passed, we have to return action, we have to return that it, the user, it's not all authorized. So that's what this is going to do here. All right. Press dot create response. Alright. Create response. And hold on, just give it a second here. You see we you're probably gonna get a uh, there you go, create response. Yeah, you gotta make sure you include everything. HTTP status code dot unauthorized. Okay, so this is this. You can actually run, run a quick. Okay, so this is the base. So just kind of overview here. This is the basic. What's going to happen is it's going to check for your header for authorization key for an authorization, right? If it doesn't find an authorization, it's going to say this user or this action it's not authorized. We can run a quick test here just with this with what we have. Uh, but before we run a test, we got to make sure we got to include this attribute into our controller, right? So what what we do is alt attribute. You can copy this. You got to you can do either the you can do this either on a controller level or at the functional level. I want to do controller level. You can just click. You can just add alt attribute right there. And you got to make sure you include where it's been you know added. So again, what's going to happen here when we call this controller? Before it hits any of the functions inside the controller, it's going to hit this attribute. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a quick test here. I'll put a breakpoint here. Run it. So it's my API it's up and running. Now I'm gonna open my API tester. I'm gonna hit values. You see how it hits here. I'm gonna put another breakpoint in here. Yeah, there's another breakpoint in here. It hits values. It hits at the attribute, right? It hits attributes before it hits the function inside the, the function inside the API, the the controller. Okay. So as you can see here on our action context, we have the request, we have the headers, but we don't have any authorization. So this is we're gonna hit this. It's gonna say it's not authorized. So I continue and it's going to say response 401, which it means it's not authorized. All right. So let's continue. So, all right. So now if it's not authorized, it's, you know, if it's no, if the authorization is no, it's not authorized. Now we've got to do the else. <clears throat> so first, first thing we're going to do, we're going to have to go get the token that the authorization passed from the tester, right? Which is gonna be here. That's what we're gonna need. So authenticate. So let's create an authentication token. Let's put it a uh, string, which is gonna be action contacts request headers, authorization, and then scheme. So that's how we're gonna, that's this function. This is how we're gonna retrieve the token or the authorization token or you know the key 
past 10 to this function okay now first thing we're going to do is verify validate if this token here if whatever it's been passed to this function equals the key this key right so if it's equals this key what we're going to do is we're just going to say authorize by thread current uh, all right hold on So we're, you make sure you include a th uh, thread here. Make sure you include this, this some threading. So current, so it's gonna be current principal equals new generic principal. And then make sure you include this also. All right, give it a second here. Yep, make sure you include using system dot security principle okay new generic identity key key space no oops actually key it's capitalized and so what this is going to do is it's going to check if your key if to pass in key to this um, filter, it's equal this key. If it's equal this key, this is just gonna re this is just gonna let you go ahead and continue to this get function, for example, right? Or otherwise, or else, right? We're gonna say it's unauthorized, which is the same as this here. All right. So let's uh, give it a try. Run it. All right, my API is up and running. So let's go ahead and do a, f a test again without the authorization header. You send it, it's going to say the key doesn't exist. So it's unauthorized, right? So continue and it's going to say 41, uh, 401, which is unauthorized. Now let's go ahead and add the authorization header. You click add header and you type authorization. And let's just, then let's just pass in a random key, right? And then hit send. I'm back here again. So now it does have an authorization header, as you can see here. It does have something, right? So now it's gonna put this authorization header into a into the authentication token string, which is there. But when you try to validate against this key here, it's going to say, "Oh, this is not the same key." So it's gonna say you you don't have permissions. Right there, unauthorized again, right? So now let's go back and grab our actually private key. Insert our private key here, which is the correct key. Hit send. So it's going to check if there's an authorization key. There is. It's going to set the authorization key being passed to authentication token, which it is. And it's going to validate the passed in authentication key token with the key with this key and it's going to tell you oh it's good to go it's the same so it's going to give you the okay to call the controller to call the functions in the controller and once you hit continue it's actually going to hit the controller uh whatever function you're calling so yeah so this is a pretty simple authentication method uh just one more time let's go over this function here so the first step is you create an API, your API is going to have the default uh, controller and for, for this example here, I just use the valid controller. So we don't have to create a brand new controller. And then you create the attribute. So I create an alt attribute, make sure you include the uh, attribute, attribute filter, authorization filter attribute. Um, you got to write your uh, an override on authorization function this what this function is going to do is every time you call the API every time you call this controller it's going to check the it's going to do an out a pre-check authorization before it hits the actual functions in the controller and so basically what this does the very first if statement checks if there's an authorization being passed into this uh, function into the attribute if not it just tells you you know you don't have access to it or if there is an authentication token being passed it validates authentication token 
and it either gives you the OK to continue or it tells you you don't have authorization. And if you do have authorization, you're actually going to be able to access the, the functions. So there's another thing that you can do here, you can check. So instead of doing an attribute level, uh, I'm sorry, instead of doing a controller level, you can actually stop here and do on the and do on the functional level for a get. You can put it here for a get. So if you call the get, right? If you call the get, if you call the get specifically, it's going to hit here. So let's do an example here. Because I'm calling the get, right? On the tester it's going to hit this again right so it's same thing yeah right there now with the get with an id which is going to be this one right let's go ahead and test this one you see it's not going to hit the attribute value because it's not on the controller level so let's go ahead and then just do space and one if i hit send you see how it hits it's going to hit oh let's say it again it's going to hit the val the it's going to hit the function to get with an ID before uh, it's going to hit the function even though we have because the attribute it's not set up on a controller level so yeah see I have a response okay 200 that means it's authorized and I do get a value um, yeah so that's it for this video if you guys have any questions concerns comments uh, just drop them below thanks very much guys